everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. I take this opportunity to welcome all to our concluding session of web talk series on parental well-being. Today's session is on taking care of our precious eyes in COVID times. There was always a concern about the use of gadgets, screen time, and eye health. With the COVID-19 crisis, every screen time of children is on the rise. With online classes, homework, chat with friends, gaming, and watching shows or movies. Left with no choice of going out or playing with the neighbors, the screening time has increased. In such a scenario, parents are constantly worried about their long-term optic health and the strain on their eyes. To address these issues, we have to be amongst us Dr. Lakshay Dudeja, ophthalmologist. Dr. Lakshay did his MBBS from Molana Azad Medical College, New Delhi, then Masters of Surgery from Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore. He did General Ophthalmology Fellowship of one year from Arvind Eye Hospital, Salem, followed by long-term fellowship of 1.5 years at Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai. He continued working at Arvind as consultant for the next two years. Later, he did ICU fellowship at Kellogg Eye Center, Michigan, USA. Currently, he is working at Center for Sight as a consultant, cataract, cornea, and refractive surgeon. A very warm welcome to you, Dr. Lakshay, on behalf of the entire Salvan fraternity. Thank you. Thank you. I also take the opportunity to welcome our esteemed principal, Ms. Rashmi Malik. Ms. Malik is an educationist who believes in the larger cause of service to humanity. I would request ma'am to speak about these well-being series of talks. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, Jyoti, and thank you for the entire uh, counseling department taking up the parent well-being in such a great manner through these, you know, series of webinars in June month. Uh, this, as we all know, this is the last uh, webinar of the series of parental well-being. That does not mean that we'll put a stop to it. Obviously, uh, as uh, you all know that uh, we have uh, the Fit Sylvanian as a theme for the entire session of 2021. And ironically, you know, they, we've got this pandemic situation. Uh, but then nevertheless, uh, uh, the first series, uh, the first session of the series, you know, was conducted by Dr. Samir Parekh, you know, he talked about stress management at home during these COVID times. The second series was Ms. Ramya, whom you had invited, and uh, she was like, uh, uh, you know, going through this art of living uh, concept. I mean, she's taken that path, although we always say that there are many paths, I mean, it's up to you what path uh, suits you better. So she spoke uh, extensively about parenting, especially for the little kids. And uh, I'm very sure that parents must have got some empowerment through that session. And today being the eye care, which is the most important, although we all have been using mobile phones and the laptops, you know, during our normal days also, before the COVID times also. But during the COVID time, we've been discussing a lot about the screen time. So this is something uh, which uh, you have thought very well as counselor of the school that we should be actually, you know, focusing on this particular part. And I'm very thankful to Dr. Lakshay for taking out time from his busy schedule and, you know, joining us here and talking about how to take care of the eyes, what all problems we can have. And Dr. Lakshay, as I was talking to you uh, about my own condition, uh, I was not having those spectacles, you know, before... Uh, <laughs> the COVID. But uh, now, you know, the work has increased so much because everything is online, especially the online classes for which we have to prepare extensively. Uh, I have started using specs because it, it really, you know, initially I was not aware uh, that what is happening to me. I started with a, a small headache and then, you know, uh, so much so that in two days time, my eyes, you know, I couldn't, you know, focus my eyes on the screen. It was so bad. So then I realized that there's something wrong with my, you know, screen usage. So uh, I kept, you know, uh, knowingly myself away from screen for a few hours. And I saw that it subsided. 
so that uh, you know reminded me that okay it's time to wear a specs <laughs> otherwise you know it's going to take a great toll on my eyes so looking forward to your session dr lakshay and once uh, you uh, you know uh, give us the talk about how to take care of our eyes and maybe in the end we may you know take up certain questions which you think must have got from the parents also and from of course teachers as well and i think some of the students were all also were also asking some questions regarding the you know i care during these covid times uh, but yes uh, jyoti after this you need to talk about the addiction to mobile also addiction to gadgets also but today let's restrict ourselves for, you know towards the uh, i care from the doctor thank you so much for joining us dr lakshay and uh, over to you now thank you ma'am thank you ma'am over to you dr lakshay for children today using technology comes as naturally as breathing our kids learn to operate these devices faster than us sadly the flip side is the addiction and dependency on these gadgets the lockdown has further compounded the problem with the virtual school classes making it increasingly difficult to reduce the screen time of young children doctor can you please explain through the lens of ophthalmology what are the general effects of prolonged exposure to screen and how we can help our children yeah thank you everyone thank you jyoti ma'am for the kind introduction so today we'll be talking about visual hygiene during especially during covid times as principal ma'am correctly pointed out visual hygiene is not important just during covid times but it has come to everyone's notice during covid times so it has always been there maybe now we are addressing it and we may continue these steps beyond covid times as well so i have no financial interest <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first most important slide so i request everyone to have a paper pen so that you note down what you didn't know what extra you gain through this talk and your queries which come through this talk you can note them down and then type them in q and a sec uh, section of this zoom video the next point is that this talk is not, not just for children not just for kids but also for parents who are doing work from home who are using computer more than the normal you are dependent on computer screen tv for news entertainment work for everything practically everything so this is for everyone's benefit you must have heard this old saying that looking at screens damages your eyes permanently it ruins your eyes thankfully it's not completely true you may have some uncomfortable effects from staring at the screen for too long but these do not cause permanent damage a study in us it focused on the radiations coming from the computer monitors and it noticed there are no measurable uv radiations coming and exposure to the electromagnetic fields or radiations coming from the monitors has no notable health risks having said that another study states that we have visual symptoms visual problems in 75 to 90% of people using computer and musculoskeletal disorders or problems in 22% of computer users and by computer users i mean 2 hour 2 or more hours per day of computer so what is this computer vision syndrome it is a series of visual symptoms which are a by product of excessive viewing of computer screens without proper attention to the practical visual hygiene so we said that this is not because of the radiations coming so what causes it it is the poor environment improper habits and the prolonged duration this is most important these are all correctable things this is not dependent mostly on computer this is our bad habits which is causing trouble to our eyes studies say that they can cause developmental outcomes in children 
who are addicted to computers you who are sitting most of the time indoors it can cause obesity poor sleep quality eye development can be hampered so what who says no screen time for children less than 1 year of age and up to 2 years of age maybe some video chatting with grandparents or maybe some focus on educational videos but up to 2 years also it says restricted use beyond 2 years of age there are no specific recommendations as there are no specific recommendations for how much to exercise how much to eat how much to walk it is all person to person variable how much can your eyes take so there are no specific recommendations on how much of screen time beyond 2 years of age so this computer vision syndrome what what are the effects like madam said she had headache she had double vision so what all it can cause it can cause headaches how do you know that you have some problem because of screen you will start feeling eye strain redness of eyes watering of eyes neck pain back pain double vision dry eyes photophobia means increased sensitivity or decreased tolerance to light temporary near sightedness so elaborating on temporary near sightedness when you are focusing at a near object at a near screen for long time it causes a spasm of accommodation it causes pseudo myopia you become temporarily near sighted and if you use it for long time it ca can cause structural it these co changes may become structuralized it can cause sleep disturbance as well this excessive screen use Be it can also cause burning of eyes squinting of eyes letters on the screen they start running together merging together halos around the object you are forced to interrupt to work frequently and there can be some changes in color perception so all these are symptomatologies of computer vision syndrome when you can suspect that screens are causing a problem you need to do something so why computer causes this screen these problems because characters on computer screen they are not well defined they are bright at the center but diminish in intensity towards the edges this makes them very difficult for eyes to focus and excessive focusing causes eye strain burning and tiredness constant gazing at a near distance will fatigue your convergence you are sitting in a fixed posture for long hours your eyes are focused straight for so long and most importantly you forget to blink you are so focused in your work you forget to blink so all these things while doing computer work increases your problem or rather causes them i'll take a break here dr jyoti uh, ma'am am i audible my audio is clear audible sir okay so let's continue all these symptoms are exaggerated by inappropriate glasses like most of the symptoms of principal ma'am also they were relieved when she started wearing glasses so inappropriate glasses will exaggerate all these symptoms blurred vision headache eye strain and then you tend to squeeze your eyes you tend to move lean towards the screen and these causes all musculoskeletal neck shoulder back pain so all the problems are exaggerated if your glasses are not correct then what to do this is the most important part of the talk what to do and here i want everyone to note down if any new points they come to know if any doubts they have and they can write it in q and a section as well first most important thing is modify your workstation i totally discourage children taking classes on mobile phones like you should study on a study table now this working on computer 
will become a norm. It, this is not going to change for long. So you should have a proper workstation, a table, chair, sit on table chair with a laptop or a computer and take down classes for elders as well. I totally discourage uh, lying in bed or using mobile phone in up inappropriate positions and then working on computer. All this will increase your problems. So have a proper workstation. There should be a proper place to keep your notebook, to look at the screen and your posture should be correct. Like in the first image, which is the correct posture. You should be looking straight at the computer screen or 15 to 20 degrees down. Head back should be straight. Back should be supported. Elbow joint, hip joint and knee joint should be at 90 degrees and your feet should be rested on the floor. So first image is the correct way and your screen should be at 18 to 24 inches from your face. That means half to two feet. Mm -hmm. So first one is the correct way of looking at, and this should be the norm. Regular eye checkup, yearly eye checkup, as I told, inappropriate glasses will increase all these symptoms. The next important point is proper lighting. So excessive bright light coming from outside or from the tube lights or directly falling on you will increase the glare. So how the lighting should be? In this image, you can see clearly, there should not be a direct window light coming on the face or getting reflected from the screen. You can have a light source on the side or a diffuse light source above. There should not be any reflections from the screen, increasing glare from the screen. A diffuse illumination or illumination parallel to your sitting workstation is preferred. This is to stress again that there should not be any reflections from the screen. For this, one thing is you can have an anti-reflective screen or a matte filter on your computer screen, which decreases the glare. Another thing is if you are using glasses, you can have an anti-reflective coating or a blue ray cut glasses, which decreases the reflections falling in the eye and reflections generated by your glass itself. Another way of decreasing glare, which we normally forget is basic thing of cleaning your monitor daily. You should wipe clean your monitor, your glasses daily. You tend to forget that and children especially, they tend to forget it and this increases the glare. Next important thing is adjusting the brightness and contrast of your computer screen. Your brightness should be around 50 to 60 percent. Contrast should be little higher on 70 to 80 percent. How to check the brightness? You pull up a white sheet on a computer, white background on a computer. Keep your screen in front of um, maybe a white bed sheet or a white wall and compare. It should not appear as if your computer white screen is emitting light, then it is too bright. And it should not be looking dull as compared to a white wall or a white background, then it is too dull. So it should be equal to a white background, not too bright, not too dull. This is the way to check it, but roughly it should be at around 50 to 60%. Contrast should be a little higher. Another important thing, take frequent breaks. 10 minute break every one to two hours. This reduces eye strain. This relaxes your eyes. This gives you your eyes time to rejuvenate. You tend to move your eyes away from the screen. And this is the most important thing. Take 10 minutes break every one to two hours. 
another important thing is rule of 2020-2020. So you must have heard 2020 matches. So this is similar, 2020-2020 rule. So every 20 minutes of computer work, look at an object which is 20 feet away for at least 20 seconds. So every 20 minutes, you are moving your eyes away from the screen, looking at a distant object, which breaks your spasm of muscles, your convergence, your temporary nearsightedness, and you look at and focus at a distant object, object which is 20 feet away, maybe outside a window, or maybe another corner of the room for 20 seconds, blink for one or two times, and then start working again. This is the most important thing, 20, 20, 20 rule. This everyone can note down. In this 20, 20, 20, we can add one more 20, that is your screen should be at 20 inches distance from your face. Another thing which I focused earlier also, blinking. So normally human eyes, humans, they blink 15 times a minute. But when you are working on computer, you're gazing at computer, you blink five to seven times a minute. Mm -hmm. So you should make a conscious effort to blink. It keeps your eyes surface, prevents it from drying out. And the correct way of blinking is blink completely, gently, don't squeeze and then open. No point of winking, partial blinking or squeezing. Blink normally, don't squeeze your eyes and open. This should be reminded repeatedly by parents and teachers at children when they are playing video games or engrossed in the screen, they tend to forget that they have to blink. This applies to elders as well. So every point applies to seniors as well who are working, who are doing work from home. Exercise while you're sitting. So this, is, this was how to keep your eyes healthy. Your body should also be moving. When you're sitting, try to do some bending exercises. Bend laterally, up, down, bend forward, rotate your neck, turn your head, so this way, you keep your joints moving. Use artificial tears to refresh your eyes. So when you feel that even after taking all these precautions, you feel your eyes are dry, you can use artificial tears. This is for everyone. And artificial tears can be taken over the counter. So there will be many brands of artificial tears available. Preferable are preservative-free preservative -free ones. And there are good brands which you can buy, artificial tears. And you can take them over the counter and start using them even without consulting a doctor. And if it doesn't subside, the next step would be coming to an ophthalmologist. Wash your eyes with cold drinking water. You can keep your eyes closed and then wash. This gives your eyes a little bit relaxation. Avoid sitting directly opposite to cooler or AC. So directly opposite the vent or directly air blow coming on your face that increases your eye dryness. So this should be avoided. Few tips for contact lens users. Now we are in the home all the time so you can take a break from contact lenses and shift to glasses. Don't ever sleep with contact lens even if the company claims that this is an extended wear can be worn in the night. You should never wear contact lenses and sleep. Always use good contact lens cleaning practices. Washing your hands with soap and water before and after using changing, washing your box every week, changing your solution every time you use your contact lenses. So these are a few healthy practices. And even after that, if you feel your eyes are red, blurry or watery, it's time to see an ophthalmologist. So a few quick tips. 
So everybody must have noted down 20, 20, 20 rule. Every 20 minutes, looking at something which is 20 feet away, outside the window or another corner of the room for 20 seconds. Set a timer for children to look at a distance. You alternate e-books with real books and encourage them to look outside the window. Another important point, avoid screen devices for games and entertainment, especially during these times. When they are doing their homework, their schoolwork on computer, encourage them in another, other physical activities, keep them involved in another, other household activities, distracted from screen devices for games and entertainments at least. Brightness, I told you, there should not be unnecessary glare coming from the screen, getting deflected from the screen. So screen should not be used in sunlight, should not be used outside. Adjust brightness and contrast. Brightness, 50 to 60%, contrast around 70, 80%. Good posture, I explained to you, and screen should be at 18 to 24 inches from your face. Remind them to blink. Blinking will solve many of your problems. Avoid using screen one to two hours before sleep. So screen time has been known to be associated with sleep disorders or sleep disturbance. It causes hormonal dis disturbances, which will disturb the sleep pattern. So you should avoid using screen one to two hours before going to sleep. Reduce screen glare by using matte screen filters on the, on the screen. Or if you are using glasses, use them with an anti-reflective coating or a Blu-ray cut. Artificial tears to be used and contact lenses users can take a break from contact lenses. So many of these eye symptoms are temporary. And if you take all these precautions, these should solve. How teachers can help. Encourage breaks. Space out the classes. So need not be all the classes in the morning. You can space out morning, afternoon, and if possible, evening. Space them out. Pause in between classes and give them time to relax. Avoid giving online homeworks. So you should include book reading in the homeworks and not the online homeworks. Because now teaching is going online, so at least homework should be offline, wherever possible, of course. So few images, I feel these images, they speak louder than words. So this is the situation now. We are into screens everywhere. And these are the symptoms, headache, blurred vision, eye strain, neck pain, red eyes, these are the alarming symptoms. This I have stressed enough, I think, 20, 20, 20. So every 20 minutes, 20 seconds, look at something 20 feet away. Eye yoga. So what is eye yoga? So you rotate your eyes into different directions. Right side, left side, up, down, all directions. You rotate your eyes. So this should be done three to four times in the morning and three to four times in the evening. This helps your eye muscles, all the eye mu muscles coordinated work to continue. This is the posture. You should have a proper workstation, your eyes looking straight at the monitor or slightly 15 to 20 degrees downwards, monitor at 18 to 24 inches away, wrist, Oh, sorry, elbow, hip, and knee at 90 degrees, feet rested on the ground, and back supported. Back straight, neck straight. This is how we should encourage our children to study. Because this is not going to go away in one or two days. This, has, this will be becoming the norm. This is to summarize the symptoms, everything about eye strain, but mainly 
for the blue light lenses and the anti-reflective lenses shown downside, which prevent the extra glare coming from the screen. So these glasses also help. If you have taken other precautions and still the symptoms are not going, this is next thing to try. Dry eyes, I, as I told, it is, the problems are increased because of computer screen, because you forget to blink. So one is you can blink often, remind yourself, wash your eyes with drinking water, keep away from direct AC or cooler vent, have a healthy nutrition, nutritious diet, avoid pollutants, irritants, use artificial tears. The seventh point, most important one, hydrate yourself. Keep yourself hydrated, a lot of water. It helps in tear production. It decreases the dryness of the eyes and many of your symptoms will improve with this. This is again to summarize because I feel images, they catch attention. So regular eye checkup, eye exercise, proper lighting, monitor cleaning, distance adjustment, glare reduction, font adjustment, frequent blinking, wearing correct glasses and 20 second break after every 20 minutes. This is one important thing which people ask, how can we prevent the number from increasing? My number is increasing, my child's number is increasing. How can I prevent? So these are the five tips. Proper lighting, proper posture, proper distance of reading. And most important is the fourth one. You can break the spasm of the muscles which are focusing at a near object which can increase nearsightedness, the other name of myopia. So you can decrease that spasm of muscles by encouraging them to look outside, take a break after 20, 30 minutes, and to encourage them to move, go out and spend some time in outdoor activities. So as grandparents used to say that you should go out, take a stroll on green grass, so this was, this has been, this was a proved fact even earlier that when you spend time outdoors, when you spend time looking at distant objects, your spasm of muscles on the near objects that breaks. Even after all this, if symptoms are still there, then you know it's the right time to come and see an ophthalmologist. So, any doubts, if you have any doubts, if you want me to repeat anything, I would be happy to do that. And you can write your doubts in Q&A section. Thank you, Dr. Lakshay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for such an enlightening session. So we, go, we will go ahead and take some questions now. Okay, Dr. Lakshay, the first question is, like other organs, can this virus be transmitted to the eye and lead to ocular com complications? And can these be prevented? Yes, very good question. So, like other viruses, even coronavirus can cause viral conjunctivitis, which is red eye. So nowadays, if a patient comes with a signs and symptoms of viral conjunctivitis, we ask them to home quarantine for 14 days. But the treatment of viral conjunctivitis is same as other viral conjunctivitis, but we at least make them aware that if your signs, symptoms, if you feel something abnormal in your body, you should go for a COVID testing. Okay. Okay, sir. So the second question is, what type of diet do you suggest is good for optical health? Okay. So our grand grandparents also used to say, green vegetables, yellow fruits. Other than that, everything normal that you take, good fruits, good healthy diet. Of course, you should avoid outside food, fast food. That is not good just for eyes, for your body as well. But otherwise, good fruit diet, good vegetables, that should suffice. Okay, sir. Third question is, how often one should visit an ophthalmologist? 
if you do not have any eye problem you should see an ophthalmologist at least once a year but if you have a eye problem then as per the problem you should visit an ophthalmologist thank you so the another question is what is your take on glasses contact lenses and lasik surgery okay so glasses will be the first thing to start off and once you feel the child can take care of contact lenses once he is 15 16 years of age you feel he is mature enough there's no fixed age for maturity you should feel that he is mature enough to understand that if you do not clean your contact lenses properly this can harm your eyes so once they understand this fact you can start using contact lenses and if you are taking or proper precautions cleaning them properly not using them beyond expiry date washing cleaning if all practices are correct contact lenses are completely safe don't sleep with the contact lenses and regarding lasik so once you cross 19 20 years of age and your number is stable for one year then you can go for a lasik screening not lasik lasik screening in which your eyes your cornea is screened if the ophthalmologist feels that there is slightest of doubt we generally do not proceed because still it is considered a cosmetic surgery we should not be harming if at all we are not benefiting right so if we have a doubt with the screening we do not proceed if the screening is uh, totally fine then lasik with today's technology is now very safe okay another question is what is your take on cheaper online spectacle options there are so many options nowadays so what yeah. is your take in that yeah that is important now so when you go for a glass prescription it is not just the number it is not just i have minus 2 number or minus 3 number there are many things to look at your upper rim should be at the eyebrow level your glass side should be resting on your ears your nose pad should not be hurting you it should be lightweight correctly fitting covering your eyes and then in the glasses in the lenses another important thing is interpupillary distance which is the center of the glass lens should be at the center of the eye if it is the centers are not matching it can cause prismatic effects prismatic effects instead of lens effects so these distances are to be measured the fitting is to be checked so it is not just the number which you can write online that i want a minus 2 glass with this frame so all these things cannot be checked online so it is always preferable to visit an op ophthalmologist or maybe a optometrist and get your glasses done yeah jyoti here i would like to add one thing you know it came to our notice dr uh, lakshay mm -hmm. uh, i mean two years back only that many of our school children you know they started wearing specs and suddenly we realized that why this number is uh, increasing so when we you know inquired and found out they were going to one particular local uh, you know operation and uh, i don't know i'm i'm sorry to say but i think to improve his business he started yeah. you know uh, giving advice to all the parents your child is you know eyes are getting weak and all that thing so here i think i would like to you know even warn the parents that uh, you yes. have to be very careful about the eyes of your children if you want to take them out to you know for the check up you should go for some reputed either hospitals or you know like your kind of center of sight so i mean where you know the dedicated team is there complete team true. is there. True, true, so true. the thing which you have brought out that online they should not do this is absolutely right. Although you know, I think the many um, uh, these uh, eye institutes and eye hospitals will start the online consultation also. But I'm yeah. very sure that there will be more professionals, you know, in their uh, the, the diagnosis and all. So this is something I thought that I'll add up because this we actually faced at school very recently. Right. And uh, yeah, and you know because they started wearing the specs, now they can't take it off. It was very difficult. So okay, yes. continue, Jyoti. Okay. 
Uh, Dr. Lakshay, another question is, what is your opinion about Blu-ray cut or anti-glare glasses? Yes. So if you are, or if a child is having glasses, having spectacles, it is always preferable to go for anti-glare ones or Blu-ray cut because they prevent extra reflections from the screen. Okay. But I do not advise plain glasses only with anti-reflective just for screen work. So this is what Madam also pointed out. This people generally try to sell off. You can find this on Amazon as well. Plain anti-reflective glasses. So if at all you have problem with computer screen, first try to change your habits. Try to see what is causing it. Next thing you can do is decrease direct reflections from the screen. Put an anti-reflective coating on the screen rather than on your eyes. And if everything doesn't work, still your symptoms are too much troubling and you feel that they are because of computer screen, you can see the difference when you're not using the screen, symptoms are not there. Then yes, with the ophthalmologist opinion, you can go for a plano glass also but not as a first option. Yes, sir. So another question is, which company artificial tears are good? Okay. So artificial tears, you can go for preservative free ones. So when you go to a pharmacist, he will show you artificial tears ranging from 40, 50 rupees up to 200, 400 rupees also. So what is the difference? You go for the costly ones, they are preservative free. They are better ones. So there are many good brands like Gentile, Sustain Ultra, Optimoist Ultra, Refresh Tears. These are good known brands. Other brands are also good, you can try, but I would say mm. the preservative ones, the costlier ones, <laughs> they are better. I have a query, Jyoti, here, Dr. Sir. Uh, what about the gulab gel, our own very Indian thing? <laughs> gulab gel, actually, the sterility is doubtful. And uh, what this tear drops has, it has the same pH, same osmolarity as your normal tears. Okay. So they are very similar to your tears, unlike gulab gel. Okay. Okay. So it is always advisable to go for sterile things which are packed under sterile conditions, no contamination, and which are as close to your normal tears as possible. So they have the same pH, same osmolarity, same electrolytes, as close to as your normal tears. So they are preferable. Yeah. Okay, and I remember something called as iTone. I don't know which company it is. iTone is also in there, yeah. It's okay, it's good. We it's can good, use that. Okay, that's my mom's use that. formula, so I thought that I'll ask. <laughs> yeah, you can use you can thank use it, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And another question is what is your take on spectacle power checking by optometrist? This is what madam also pointed out. Yeah, so when you go for a spectacle correction, so ninety nine percent it will be just glasses. But one person times, we see people with other eye problems also, with children, which are not detected when you go to an optometrist. So when you have cylindrical power, you are, there are chances you can have keratoconus, abnormal shape of cornea. So there are other problems also, which can be there, which need to be screened. So what we usually think is eye problem means spectacles. 99% it is correct, but 1%, if that 1% is you and you have missed that diagnosis and you turn up late, that creates problems. So it is always advisable once a year, you should visit an ophthalmologist, at least get a screening done that everything is going fine. Okay, so another question is by a parent that I often squeeze my eyes, how it is going to affect my eyes? Yes. So squeezing of eyes is a sign that you are straining or you are creating a pinhole effect to see clearly. So what we normally say is when you have glass power, you do put a pinhole in front 
the person is able to see clearly. So when you squeeze your eyes, you create that small slit, which gives you clear vision temporarily. So this is an indication that you need a glass check. You may be having a spectacle power, which you are managing somehow by squeezing or straining your eyes, but which is not good for long run. So it is the correct time to go to an ophthalmologist, get your pair of glasses and relax your muscles. So another question is, after how much time we should take a break from contact lenses? So it depends on contact lens to contact lenses. So there are extended wear contact lenses, which they claim up to 12 hours. Normal soft contact lenses, eight hours of work. So it all depends on contact lenses and it is mentioned with the brand you are taking. You should go for good brands only, Johnson Johnson or Bosch & Lom, good contact lenses because they allow good oxygen exchange with the environment. They are soft, the material is good, okay? So once you go for long extended wear contact lenses, you can go up to 12 hours, but never sleep overnight with contact lens, even if the company claims. Right, sir. Um, so there's a, student, a query from a student. Sir, I like reading a lot and due to online classes, it's not possible as it is not good for our eyes to keep studying. So how to manage both the things? So this is, you classes are going online. I, I suppose you like reading offline, your books, real books. So this should not hamper, I think, this should be encouraged. You can go for as much as you want. You can read offline books, the real books. This should not create any problem. But the only thing is read it in a proper posture, sit on table chair and read it. Diffusely illuminated room, try to read in a proper table chair thing. Yeah. I would like to add here, Jyoti. I, uh, I mean, I was attending a webinar and I heard, I think I read it in the newspaper wherein uh, the expert was talking about that, uh, you know, uh, when you are looking at the screen, the screen is flickering a lot. So that has, uh, you know, adverse effect on the eyes. Whereas when you are reading, you are actually reading a static book. I think we, we uh, heard it uh, by Sarah Brennan, the author, you know, in her right. session, she, she had it in her presentation. Uh, I, and it got stuck, uh, you know, in my head that it's so true that when you are reading, the children especially, when they are reading, their eyes, you know, remain uh, static on the book. So it is like more beneficial than, you know, looking at the screen continuously for many hours because screen is flickering uh, within microseconds also. So uh, I thought that I'll add this particular thing up. Yeah. Sure. I think ma'am, another question is same as yours. What benefits would we get with home remedies like putting rose water in eyes, Practice glaring at a point till tear comes out as an exercise, keeping cucumber on ice, etc. So okay. what is your take on that, sir? So we'll go stepwise. One is rose water. Rose water, I told, instead of rose water, better to go for artificial tears. Staring at one point till it tears, I don't think it's a good practice. So what we normally recommend is convergence exercises. So you do with a pen, take a pen, keep it at elbow arm distance, look at the tip and bring it close. When you start seeing blurred, you stop there. Try to focus and make it single again, the image. If you're not able to do, go back to start and practice again. But these convergence exercises or focus exercises are not for everyone. This is mainly for those having convergence deficiency or having exospoint, means eyes are turned outside. You try to bring them in. But still, if you do these exercises, take look at the tip of the pen, bring it close till it becomes double, and then go back again. This should not harm at least. So you can do it to improve your convergence. It may help. Last thing, putting cucumber thing, cucumber on eyes. So this is, this reminds me of another thing, which parents or patients usually ask. 
they usually say that glasses cause dark circles around the eyes so this is normally what people say the dark circles are because of glasses so what causes these dark circles the eye pads pressing on the nose constantly it causes temporary obstruction of blood flow and lymph flow and because the skin is thin here it can become dark and because of lens effect also but most important causes of dark circles are improper hydration improper sleep so glasses are not a common cause most important causes are improper hydration hydrate yourself well get a proper sleep most of your dark circles will go but if at all you are using glasses and you feel that dark circles are there so you should go for a properly fit glasses which are lightweight and do not press on your nose too much to decrease those dark circles you can use these cooling things like putting cucumber on eyes putting rose water around eyes maybe lemon peel they dry it and make it a paste and apply or maybe some face mask or some people use cut slices of potato these are few options which you can use but i want to clarify the dark circles are not because of glasses they are mostly because of improper sleep improper hydration i'm your mute actually we would take the last question now sir Mm -hmm. uh, should children with normal vision wear plano glasses with arc while working on computer okay okay this one i i think i mentioned right now if they are already using a glass they should go for a arc coating or a blue ray cut coating if they are not using glasses using a zero power just to prevent the glare should not be the first option first option should be reducing the glare coming from the light sources falling on your computer screen and getting reflected cleaning your screen daily your oil stain marks your fingerprints on the screen clean them daily put them put your screen on a proper proper room properly lit room and if at all you want a anti glare the first option should be putting anti glare on the screen rather than on your eyes put a screen guard with a matte finish on the screen and if all these are not working with an ophthalmologist opinion you can go for a anti glare coating glasses plain also yeah thank you so much dr lakshe it looks please, like we have covered please, all the questions please, yeah please. there are two yes, questions uh, which i can see on facebook i think i should mention these two yes, questions ma'am from the parents one question is uh, the mother is asking that my daughter is 4 year and 3 months old now and she got her specs at an age of 3.5 years she watched tv for an hour on daily basis along with 2 hours of online classes can you please suggest how can we get her eyesight improved her power is plus 3.0 in one eye and plus 1.75 in another i mean there is young uh, children you know getting specs mm -hmm. so can we do something about this doctor yeah so the main cause for getting glasses is the length of your eyeball so that is why till the time your height is increasing your bone size are changing till 18 or 20 years of age there is a chance of fluctuation of power but so if that has to happen it will happen you cannot stop it but you can take certain steps to avoid it from increasing as i already mentioned your classes are going online so your one hour of extra tv time if you can decrease and distract her in other physical activities involve her in other activities that would be helpful in two hours of screen this school work also you can take breaks after 20 minutes ask her to look around look at something distance blink wash her eyes with drinking water and then continue working so taking frequent breaks will give your eyes appropriate time to rejuvenate 
Okay, and uh, there's one more question which says that should we splash our eyes with water after getting up in the morning? I think this is a normal hygiene uh, process. Yeah. We should follow this. So actually putting water in eyes, I would say it is better to splash with eyes closed and that okay. too with drinking water. Okay. Not with the normal tap water, drinking water. Okay. If at all you feel your eyes inside are getting dry and you need to do something, it is advisable you put a teardrop which is sterile, which has same pH, not irritant to your eyes. Put one drop of teardrop in your eyes, it will flush off everything and then you can start your day. Mm -hmm. And uh, one person is saying that my son is of eight years and mm -hmm. his eyes are watering sometimes. Eye test has been done, there is no problem. So I think you've already suggested maybe you can repeat one or two uh, thanks for so that. eyes watering, one of the causes is eye strain, but that is not the only cause. It can be allergy to something or maybe mild infection or maybe something else. So you can go for an ophthalmologist checkup instead of just a glass checkup. Mm -hmm. So can be some other thing which is causing this watering of eyes. If it is not getting cured by your normal, these things, practices, yeah. Okay, I think the questions are still pouring, but then uh, I would request the parents to go, uh, you know, go through this entire session video once again and uh, pick up, you know, all the uh, things which you have already talked about. Uh, Jyoti, uh, you can yes, continue. Yeah, I would request you rather, ma'am, to say a few words, ma'am. <laughs> few words. Uh, I mean, in fact, you know, uh, Dr. Lakshya, just uh, something about our uh, school and the trust. You know, in Silvana Education Trust, I mean, the first thing, uh, the first discussion after, you know, uh, taking over this position was. Yes, I believe uh, some issue. Okay. Never mind. Um, Dr. Lakshi, you shared valuable tips on how to reduce the digital eye strain that one often experiences when looking at a screen for a period of time. So, but to you, ma'am. Yeah, I, I, the, you, you actually got disconnected. It seems in between. Yeah, you got disconnected. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I got disconnected. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I thought that I was talking. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was uh, telling uh, that the Sylvan Education Trust is always worried about you know the physical and the mental health of the students. And the first discussion with Chairman Emeritus, you know, I had about uh, how will you keep the children fit. And he, you know, pointed out that, uh, will you please do a survey of your school and tell me how many children are wearing specs in your school? And then he was narrating, uh, I mean, his name is uh, Sri Shivdat Silvanji, and he was narrating that in his time, there was hardly one child in the entire school who was wearing specs. So, you know, that discussion continued for, I think, half an hour. And uh, we discussed the various pros and cons. The things were pollution, the screen, the television, the laptops, the mobiles, you know, which is like hampering. But then he told me that if you just make them, you know, uh, take rounds in the ground early in the morning, the way you were talking about that our elders used to tell us that we used to, we, we yes. used to walk on the grass. Uh, I think if you can adopt this particular thing in our lifestyle, now also during lockdown yes. it is very much possible that early morning we can just go for a walk on the lawn uh, if we can adopt uh, you know this and in, in our homes with our families i think this will be really beneficial and we can utilize this uh, lockdown time or you know staying at home time to improve our health uh, for teachers also jyoti i would uh, i mean those teachers who are connected with us here for the session i would request all of you that early morning the first class you should have that IU. All right, I think there's some issue. Okay. I think Anyways, disconnect. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Lakshay. The basic I exercises, the 2020-20 rule must be adhered to, and along with this, anti-glare glasses, lubricating eye drops, and regular eye checkups are all essential. This is what you said. And I had noted each and everything. Okay. The strategies suggested by you are very useful. And I'm sure they will be helpful to many of us. There is no doubt that technology used by children is here to stay. 
the clear steps suggested by you will definitely be helpful in children's vision and overall health. Thank you so much for coming over here and talking to our parents and children. Thank you very much to the audience as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for having me here.